Hello and um, and welcome. It's uh, it's me again talking about the fourth chapter of Marcus Borg's meeting Jesus again for the for the first time. Uh, and this week we'll talk about Jesus as wisdom teacher, as sage, and and not so much um, as the self revelation of God. We'll talk more about that uh, next week of, uh, of of the divine wisdom, uh, but just Jesus in the genre of wisdom teacher and. Uh, um, and very quickly, Marcus Borg makes the distinction between conventional wisdom, what, what most people uh, would see as, uh, as the norms of the time, the, the yardsticks for which they, uh, they balance their lives, uh, and uh, a different way, uh, uh, an alternative or even a subversive uh, way to be. And, um, and, and Jesus certainly, certainly presents that. Uh, and he uses different tools. He doesn't uh, tell people, okay, do this, don't do this. Uh, I mean, there are some instances of that, but much more so, it's an invitation to uh, to listen and to discern uh, and to see what this new way might be, and 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 possibly uh, to open themselves up to following that. It's a uh, uh, it's definitely more invitational than directive, which uh, which I think you know, really speaks. Uh, you know, the rabbi means teacher, but the real root of educare to pull out. Uh, Jesus invites and, and gives the information uh, that is needed for people to choose uh, this narrow way, this new way. Uh, and a couple of the ways that he does that uh, are through aphorisms, those great one-liners that Jesus has. You can't serve uh, two masters, uh, which people would have sort of shook their head and said, yes, that's true. Um, you know, we can't serve manna uh, or wealth or uh, the things of this earth. Uh, that uh, that have luster uh, and God fully at some point we get uh, spread too thin um, or or parables uh, the parables were incredible teaching tools still are incredible teaching tools uh, and they invite us in uh, they don't tell us exactly uh, what to do or believe uh, but as we respond to them as they uh, resonate within us uh, we we take on uh, a sense of uh, of, of connection with it and, and, and get new meaning from it, uh, and, and it certainly points to uh, a different way. And so, so those are some of the tools. Uh, I love the way uh, he described the Sermon on the Mount as he saw it in movie form, uh, and he says, you know, it, uh, it was almost uh, comical uh, that it's just a series of, of, of aphorisms that sometimes uh, uh, it requires us to think, okay, this probably is a collection of sermons over a long period of time uh, with lots of wisdom sort of encapsulated uh, in one sermon and, uh, and probably not just a sermon full of, uh, of one-liners one after the other in, in such a quick concert that, uh, that folks wouldn't be able to absorb uh, the real richness and, and depth of meaning. Uh, to him, so uh, so it's very in, in, invitational, uh, and and the conventional wisdom was the dominant idea of the time, and uh, the com the dominant idea about God uh, was that that God was judge. Uh, that was the uh, uh, the overarching understanding uh, that God was judge, and that um, a good bit of uh, of what God did was um, uh, was set the rules uh, and see who's being naughty and who's being nice. Uh, how faithfully are we following? Uh, the rules, and, and that was the dominant identity of God. Um, it, w it was uh, uh, it was not a near a nearer to me God. It was a distant God, and it was um, a pretty stern and, and, and wrathful God. Um, the idea of God as as womb uh, as as having the very nature of compassion uh, was was probably uh, it wasn't just probably it wasn't conventional uh, it was uh, it, it was an alternative understanding of, of who God was uh, uh, but to break convention uh, w was to go in a radically different direction and and that required uh, really pushing against those conventional norms. Uh, and it's important to understand, and, 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 Borg, and Borg does so uh, faithfully, uh, that this wasn't uh, pushing against the, the tenets of Judaism and, and lifting up Christianity. Uh, I think Christianity is every bit as vulnerable uh, to us uh, wrapping ourselves around uh, conventional uh, wisdom, the conventional norms. Uh, you know, society is, is, is pretty pervasive that way, and it's our basis for identity and self-esteem, and so, uh, so we often uh, bend our religion around our social norms and certainly as Episcopalians um, I think that that's one of the things that that we uh, that we're at risk at we we like being um, uh, 
intelligent, well-informed, very participatory members of society uh, and, um, and want our religion to, um, to bend, uh, I think, fairly harmoniously with that. Um, you know, it's easy for me to stand and say that the uh, prosperity gospel is, a, um, uh, is an incredible example of this conventional wisdom um, uh, that, that sort of celebrates uh, our, our conventional values, our conventional uh, wisdom, uh, and, and bends Christianity to it. But I think all of us uh, need to be aware of the way that, that we do that within our, own, uh, within our own denominations, within our own churches, and within our own, within our own lives. Uh, and Jesus uh, really uh, pulls out um, the, what is unconventional, uh, that uh, really calls us to a, a, a death of that. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's a lot of that death and new life imagery is, is around uh, letting that die. Um, letting some of our basic assumptions about why we have value, about how uh, our life's supposed to be, uh, so that we can uh, be born into a new identity, a new sense of responsibility, a new yardstick for how we measure ourselves. Uh, and, and so there is, in order to break that down, there's a lot of paradox and, and, and reversal. Uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, of the parables uh, really do uh, take the norms of the time and turn them upside down. Uh, you know, I think the uh, the story of the prodigal uh, would be a great story uh, without the fact that he uh, that he lived in uh, in pig uh, you know with the pigs um, uh, in in a mud pit. I mean, uh, they they made him beyond untouchable uh, so that uh, so that the norms of the time, the conventional wisdom, could be turned upside down. Uh, the idea of the, of the woman with the yeast, uh, two things that were considered unclean at the time, uh, lifted up as an image for the kingdom, uh, you know, really was meant to uh, uh, to not just tilt, but to turn upside down uh, conventional wisdom. And, uh, uh, and I think that that's important to see. And as we read those, uh, look at the way that these uh, stories use uh, things that were... Um, that were not conventional, things that were out, totally outside convention, uh, and, and lifting them up or reversing it, or the story of the prodigal with the, the, the son, the older son, uh, who really does represent, uh, and it is in, in a lot of ways an exempl exemplary figure, uh, but in a lot of ways represents conventional wisdom um, and, and would be the normal hero in the story, and we see, uh, we see Jesus uh, turning that uh, so that we can get a sense of, of a God beyond our conventional wisdom. So. Uh, so it's worth paying attention to that. Uh, uh, I, I do think that uh, a couple of things that are, are, are really uh, worth uh, understanding is that when we talk about a broad way, that's the conventional way. That's the, uh, uh, the way that uh, most of us understand the world. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the narrow way is not that it's uh, particularly exclusive, uh, as much as it's not as easy a path or it's not as, uh, as wide open uh, a, a path that we would view that way, that, uh, uh, that it's uh, a road less traveled, uh, maybe a way to think of it, uh, that, that Jesus isn't talking about the exclusivity of Christianity as much as um, is a road that may be more difficult to travel uh, and a road that's less traveled as the subversive or alternative uh, wisdom that Jesus is providing. Uh, and a little bit more about the, the, the death imagery. Uh, while um, you know, Borg does contend that Jesus uh, probably had an understanding of, uh, of, of heaven, a belief in the afterlife, uh, a lot of his imagery around life and death uh, and new life was probably less about heaven uh, than it was about letting that conventional wisdom die, uh, dying to um, th those three A's that uh, uh, that still seem to uh, uh, that may be more uh, of a, a modern day, but certainly affected uh, the the mentality uh, in in the first century: achievement, affluence, and appearance. That those are the yardsticks that we we view ourselves with. Um, uh, what have we achieved? Uh, what is our material uh, value? Uh, and how do people perceive us? Uh, you know, if, if those are the three yardsticks, uh, that the, the death to that um, is critical, absolutely critical to, uh, uh, to us being able to, uh, to be born to a new life, um, that we can't, again, serve two masters at one time. And so a lot of that death and new life imagery is around that. Uh, and I think, uh, 
if we look at our baptismal liturgy, uh, it is, is full of that. I think it's a beautiful way to think about uh, baptism. You know, in baptism, uh, we die to the old uh, way of life uh, so that we can be reborn and that death is an essential part of, of, of being reborn uh, to new life. Uh, uh, and, and in, in that, um, and in that dying and, and taking on a new identity, we, we get new yardsticks um, and that baptismal covenant uh, where we seek and serve uh, Christ and all people, uh, where we respect the dignity of every human being. Uh, uh, those are our new yardsticks uh, in our new identity, in our new path, the narrow path, uh, the alternative wisdom uh, or even subversive wisdom. Um, that we wrap ourselves in uh, as uh, as, child, as children of God, born again uh, into that that identity, and I think that's a beautiful way to think about uh, think about baptism and to think about uh, our our call as Christians, uh, uh, and that that we live in that tension of of often trying to carry both those three A's, those achievement, affluence, and appearance uh, yardsticks, uh, and um, uh, the identity that we take on as as baptized. Uh, and, and sometimes it's hard to serve those two masters, and, uh, and Jesus tells us that uh, blankly. Uh, uh, but, uh, but what we're called to uh, is not necessarily, uh, and this is sort of the last piece, it's not necessarily um, a conventional life around conventional wisdom uh, where we uh, pull some of that uh, wisdom that we can glean uh, uh, from, from the writings of Jesus, uh, from uh, from the biblical text and incorporate them into our lives, um, but that we might be submerged, that we might be reborn into that life, uh, as uh, as Borg describes uh, Job coming to that understanding. Um, I, I knew about you, uh, but now I behold you, and 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 that's kind of what we're called into, and um, and I think uh, some of that uh, are all the different tools. Uh, that, that Jesus uses to, to move us uh, from that conventional wisdom into this new identity, uh, uh, turning the, ups the other upside down, using paradox, using aphorisms, um, uh, uh, really giving us an understanding of, uh, uh, of a new way of seeing, uh, and not just absorbing that into our old way of seeing, but, uh, but really dying to that uh, so that we could be reborn to this uh, alternative or subversive uh, way, that narrow way. Um, so it's a beautiful way to think about it, and I, I certainly encourage you to do so, and uh, found a lot of meat in this chapter, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, revisiting chapter five, uh, where uh, we understand Jesus as uh, uh, as God's wisdom. And so, uh, so I'll report back on that next week. So uh, have a great, uh, great read this week, and uh, I hope you have a, a fruitful discussion as well. God bless you.